Hello and welcome. I am with Pascal Fintoni. How are you, Pascal? I'm very, very good. You know, this has come around very quickly. Episode 19 of the Website Mastery podcast. It's great. It's great to be here. And uh, yeah, I mean, these episodes are racking up and we were reflecting on the amount of content that we've gone through on each episode. Uh, we, we've we've covered a lot of boxes, but what's frightening is there's so many, there's still so much to talk about, uh, which you know brings us into what are we going to be talking about today? This podcast is all about welcoming uh, the uh, celebration of our new program and the completion of our website best practice webinar series, the 90 day website mastery. Uh, podcast. We wanted to find a way to continue to share more advice and insights about your website, making it work harder for you and for you to feel proud about your website again. We're going to dive straight in. We have four segments uh, and um, we always start with You Ask, We Answer, which is a question submitted by the community or where we've done some research online and we dissect and give you our opinion and see what you think as well. So, Pascal, I'm going to go on to You Ask, We Answer. Thank you very much, Johnny, for the introduction. And this question, actually, is fascinating. Let me give you a bit of background, if I may. This was a question I was asked face-to-face -face during a trip down to London for a B2B marketing expo in London. And I was on my phone, as you do, deleting lots of unwanted emails from my inbox. I used, you know, Trend Travels to clear the, the inbox. And sure enough, in there, you know, on, on the socials, we saw some of the memes of um, Elon Musk and his latest outburst during, during a conference. And I was showing, you know, my screen to, to my kind of traveling companion. And he was saying, you know what, I've got this Twitter X feed on my website displaying our latest post. And to be honest with you, this platform and its new owner, they are so surrounded by controversies. I wonder whether I should remove the feed off that website so that we don't almost in a tarred by, by the summer. So we have a kind of interesting exchange about this idea of you, you do want to have your business and extension website associated with um brands that share your values but what do you do when a brand makes into the owner uh, misbehave shall we say and therefore are you likely to uh, have a negative impact on your own personal brand and your own business brand if you have this association where the feed from twitter x is very very present on your website so the discussion was should i leave the feed or should i remove the feed so yeah wh what do you say well it's interesting because some people listening right now um, probably have moved away from Twitter and, and and are focusing on the likes of Instagram, the likes of Meta, the, 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 some very different platforms. But as we know, there is still a huge core audience on Twitter, and it it is absolutely right, absolutely right for certain brands. So, and 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 what's the reason I'm mentioning that is because sometimes people don't realize the opportunity that they're missing out on Twitter because there's absolutely an audience there. It's just about, is it your audience? Is it relevant, et cetera, et cetera. In terms of the controversy and whether, you know, you want to be related to that, there's certainly advertisers pulling out, Elon's telling advertisers to, 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 uh, to disappear as well. Um, I think it comes down to the individual circumstances, which is, is your audience on there and is your content, uh, being in, is it engaging are you getting interaction on the platform and if you are then i think it does add valuable um uh, rich media to your website uh, i think it's uh, it you know if 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 it's if you're interacting on a regular basis and and uh, and it's engaging content then it can totally add value if on the other hand you're just putting posts out and they're not really doing anything and you're doing the same posts on other platforms anyway then that questions, well, forget the controversy, but should you even have the feed there in the first place? So I think it's less about the controversy. It's more about more about the relevancy um, and, uh, and, and just being cautious if things do blow up where, you know, you do need that distance. Yeah, fascinating. And what is interesting is we could almost expand the question to the, the, the purpose and usefulness of feeds from social media platforms, because I'm in two minds about it. On occasion, like you, it feels as though this was something that was put up uh, at the time of the launch of the website. 
and then it's being forgotten forever. And actually, when you go on it, it doesn't feel like there's any value or thought uh, process behind it. I, I much prefer when actually people single out a specific tweet or Facebook post or Instagram post and use it as a hook. So that could be, for example, you got a, a thank you message, or you got a praise from a very happy customer. And that is more important to have it almost as a standalone item somewhere within a contact page or, or whichever is right for you. Then for me, as a first time visitor, maybe to find my way through the feed and looking for something that maybe is relevant two weeks ago, or even six, six months ago. So I think uh, I'm okay with the feed being on the website, but I'd rather people worked out um, ways to get more value from it. And, and I do that a lot. So with my customers, we on purpose single out um, praises and 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 well done messages and put them as part of a landing page. And then if we if we share, for example, a very insightful article or, or a resource, again, we don't want it to be lost in a long, long kind of uh, column. I've got to go up and down. We single out, and actually, we write an article around this resource, and we actually put the, the, the tweet as an embed as well. Yeah, there was there was a a tre- there was a huge trend where. Um, website owners believed that they needed to have social feeds on their website because Google saw it as fresh content, as new content. But the reality is Google is not daft. Google can see if social, if, if it's a social media feed that's just been embedded on the website. So I think long gone are the days of doing it just to please Google. And I think if, and I think you've got to ask the question, why is this feed there? And if the answer is it's there because I was told that it makes it better for Google, then that's, then, then it's time to, to remove it. If on the other hand, you're sort of opening your website visitors to a community that they may not have been aware of or to content they may not have been aware of and uh, and you'd like to to move them to that community or, or certainly get them to engage with that community as well, then that's where the value is. So yeah, I, I do agree here. There's a bigger question. Um, I think in terms of the controversy though, it's more about is it relevant in the first place? And if it's relevant, I think you can ignore the controversy unless it sort of gets past that tipping point. <laughs> Which, no, completely. You know, you know if, the, if there's evidence like this, that, you know, the, the chap is linked to crime or something like this, you know, but I would imagine he would lose his position. So for viewers and listeners, let us know where you stand in, with regard to feeds in general from social media on the website. And and have you got examples of where it's worked well for you? Have you got an example where you actually you removed them and actually it had a positive impact on the website experience? Johnny, time is against us. Can we move on to our second segment, the website stories? Now, for episode 19 of the Website Mastery Podcast, we chose an article from modernretail.com, which is not something that we typically go for. We tend, Johnny and I, to go for, let's say, digital marketing or tech-type platforms. But I like the lessons from the world of B2C. I like the, the lesson from the world of retail, maybe because, essentially, I started my career in B2C with travel. I know that you did as well. So we still have some fondness about you know that particular way of communicating with customers. This is an article written by Gabriella Barco, and here's the title for you, Johnny. Black Friday and Cyber Monday have lost their meanings as brands extend promotions. I will give you a bit more information in a moment, but this idea of, you know, the article is about written well research, lots of data and, and examples about this idea of are retailers trying to uh, stay alive at the time of inflation and, you know, kind of disposable income shrinking month by month. Are they wrongly or rightly criticized for using the terms Black Friday and Summer Monday, where some of those special promotions and those campaigns are lasting for for weeks uh, on end? You know, there's some examples where PetSmart has a 20% off Cyber Week, literally, not just a Monday, the entire week. We have Nike, who had a kind of Cyber Monday (laughs) offer running till mid-December and so on. So for me, the question is almost linked to what we discussed earlier, the use of language, the appearance of something that's been thought out, but also, you know, consumers reacting. So there's somebody saying, you know, these brands can't keep extending Cyber Monday. It's Wednesday, guys. Come up with something else, please. And someone was very, very cheeky, literally tracking back that Black Friday started on the Thursday and that Cyber Monday... uh, carried on to the following Fridays. We need to have a fortnight of special offers. And is it time to let go of those terms? Yeah, it's, it's for sure. It's definitely a bit confusing in terms of actually who's doing what offer at what time. And, uh, and, and, and the sort of the consumers are just mind boggled in terms of 
is this a good offer or is it not a good offer, uh, which is really difficult. Uh, and so I think it's about thinking about how you could potentially create your own offers at different times of year where it's got nothing to do with Black Friday at all, nothing to do with, you know, choosing something random in the middle of May, in the middle of June, whatever it might be, and owning a, a particular weekend or a particular uh, day or week or even whatever it might be and sort of standing out and saying look this is our big big sale this is our this is the big one and and um and just just in some way distancing from the because it because this is a di- downward spiral it's a, it, the trouble think, the, yeah. Yeah, well the, you know that's 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 what happens in consumer if you go with price then you're just constantly uh you know trying to beat the of the competitor um and no one wins so i think yeah i maybe I, maybe i've just seen too many offers and just a bit too <laughs> you know i don't know it's, it's it, 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 yeah it's it, i think it's very confusing for me, you're touching on, on two points. So to begin with, yeah, I thought you were going to go move into the four P's and seven P's. I was going to do the happy marketers victory dance because uh, you know they, they still work. So competing on price only is, is is tricky. Piggybacking something that very much like we said earlier is not always linked with positive stories. I mean, my goodness, the Black Friday stuff. You know, to begin with, I mean, we've all seen um, what you know the news reports from the US first and then the UK of people literally battering you know the doors of shops because they were one minute behind in the opening times. The Cyber Monday, my memory, uh, please correct me, Johnny, was it started many twenty years ago because it was literally in and around this idea of delivery times and availability. So basically, the Cyber Monday was in and around. If you don't place your order today we can't guarantee you're going to get your goods and Christmas presents in time for, you know, the Christmas party and so on. Um, I think that argument is gone because, my goodness, you could order now on Amazon something that could deliver, be delivered uh, on, on the same day. Um, but I think this gentleman that was saying, you know, come up with something else, is probably right. 20 years on, is it possible that it was of its time and we must move on? I remember when working in travel, which I mentioned uh, a moment ago, we used to do this thing, which had this very unfortunate acronym of BOG OFF. People would probably smile remembering the buy one, get one free. So essentially, you, if um, you booked one holiday, you can have the other one for free the next year. So something bizarre this. And I resented the fact that my marketing function was reduced at planning discounts all the time, actually not coming up with something creative that would allow people to um, to buy it. And I was always torn. I was probably because... Um, you know, I didn't understand all of it. This idea of if you, if you booked a holiday, let's say in February, you paid full price, but if you booked it in June, you got a heavy discount. I was thinking there's some interesting dialogue here to be have about the customer who was loyal enough to book early. What can you do for them? Yeah, I, you're absolutely right. I, by the way, I apologize for the, the background noise. There's some building work going on in this building and it's not the timing of it is appalling. And however good my tech is, I'm not sure if it's cancelling everything out. Um, so, yeah, you're right with Cyber Monday. Um, it starts in 2005. 2005. <laughs> when, you know, well, you said 20 years. It's it's almost 20 years ago. And, and you know, online shopping was was tiny back then. Um, but but you're you're right. It was the idea was to get people uh, to realize that if they wanted if the, the, if they wanted to shop online and they wanted presents in time for christmas this was the day to start doing it whereas you know now you can order it on christmas eve and it'll turn up the same day so <laughs> so, so i think there is time for change um and um and and yeah for me it's it's just so difficult to stand out if you jump on this same bandwagon and and i think there's still a connotation that people just think it's the biggest discounts is on TVs, so it's. Um, I think uh, that what 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 can you learn from this? the The big thing for me is differentiation. How can you not instead of following and and being the follower? How can you differentiate? How can you stand out? How can you how can you own it and make it something that's a bit unique, a bit different, and your own take on it that really gets the true value across and makes it abundantly clear whether something is a real deal or not? And that's that that I think is where to to focus the mind. 
Thank you very much. I mean, interestingly, the article, which again doesn't take a position or, or cast judgment, just says this is you know what is happening. Um, one of the the argument from the retailers saying, well, what we're doing now is being more strategic, and we are extending the duration of the the special offers and so on for brand building and to give customers more time and more reason to purchase through through us. And I'm like, sure, that, that's an argument amongst you know many that you could you could have used. But for me, it's part of this idea of is it already or is it been the case for some time that it's just white noise and that consumers now, uh, behaviors and habits are not as seasonal as they used to be? I mean, don't get me wrong. You, you may have to buy something uniquely for that period of time because, you know, if you go for a skiing holiday or if you go for some holidays. But in general, the way in which online has disrupted this idea of well, whenever you want it, we can get it to you. You don't have to wait anymore. I wonder whether you know we're going to see, like you said, something more creative, more more targeted in next year and the years to come. Yeah, I do. You know, it's a bit like. Um, so I see a lot of companies do Christmas presents. They will do um, so to their customers. They might send a Christmas hamper or or, or some kind of present at the in the holiday season and it's a sort of thank you for doing business with us over the year but you know the ones that stand out are the ones that do something really special in january so they 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 choose a different time of year because because very few people will be sending some kind of really nice hamper in january to say thanks for the business that you did with us last year Mm -hmm. and 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 the trouble is the trouble with doing it in christmas is that you're then one of many and so, you know, you, people aren't thinking about you as much. Whereas, so I think the, the, the whole differentiation thing, I think is there's a, there's a lot of, uh, of, of credit in it um, and, um, and not getting lost in the noise as well. Super. So my second question then for viewers and listeners is, how do you react? How do you find yourself reacting now to the term Black Friday and Cyber Monday? And do you look forward to it? Do you just ignore it? Does it not even register anymore? Because you, you, you do things very, very differently that you did two, three years ago. And actually, back to Johnny's term, are you more someone like me actually looking forward to a ways of starting the year that has more meaning, uh, more excitement to one? Because, uh, I mean, ultimately, in January, as, as you may remember from a marketing point of view, this that famous uh, Blue Monday, is that right, from, from memory? So, yeah, that's right. You know, uh, which again was invented by a, tra- a travel company, actually, <laughs> for people. <laughs> you know, yeah, books yeah. holiday now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll make you feel so sad and so upset that you can't <laughs> wait to book that sunny holiday. <laughs> I, I tell you. Anyway, thanks everyone for listening to those deliberations. We're going to move on to taking action with our next segment, the website engine room. <laughs> So in each episode, Jordan and I present to you a new app, a new piece of kit that can make life easier as a website manager and content creator. So, Johnny, what is your selection? So uh, I know that some of my uh, regu- our regular vis- uh, viewers and uh, listeners will already know this uh, app because I know clients that I work with it on. But there is people that are listening and watching that probably haven't heard of it as well. So Unbounce.com, it's uh, a an app that, enables you to create landing pages so specific landing pages for uh, campaigns whether they be email campaigns uh, meta advertising campaigns google pay-per-click campaigns or perhaps even you know uh, billboard campaigns whatever it might be but it's the ability to be able to create to continue the journey for the user thinking about that user journey to be able to continue the journey uh, having the same look same feel same style same message messaging very very quickly so without having to go to your web developer without having to start creating uh, additional pages on your website unbounce.com gives you the ability to build and publish an a b test landing pages very very quickly without the need for any it any tech it gives you as marketeers the ability to increase uh, campaign conversions, uh, and to really easily test and uh, different landing page variations, uh, you know, instantly. And and so for that, this week, I'm suggesting unbounce.com. 
Thank you very much. You know, I completely forgot about them. I feel very bad, but thank you because actually the timing is impeccable. I'll be using that actually with a couple of my clients I'm working on at the moment. We want to rethink the email marketing strategy. We want to rethink the landing pages and the hooks and lead magnets. So that's going to be absolutely perfect. And you know, my work is around building an online reputation by creating better content faster. Uh, one thing I've not been able to do is to conjure up more time for my customers. So, you know, we discuss the time budget. It's limited, like everybody else. And how can we make best use of that time to create the content that is going to have the right impact, it's going to be relevant, and so on. And very recently, I was contacted by a platform called Headliner. A headline I've been using them on and off to create those um, audiograms, you know, those visuals that plays the audio. You can see the sound wave and you can see the captioning live over a static image and done very, very well and done with a bit of care. They really do have an impact and a bit of a wire factor on social media. But they've launched a, a new free uh, tool for now. And free for now because I'm guessing once it becomes very, very popular, there might be a, a very, very small charge. A, a tool called Eddy. E double D Y, which I think is, comes from the word editing. And what you can do with Eddie is upload a uh, sound file, could be a, a, an MP3 or M4, and so you can upload a sound file, get the transcription done of that conversation. I'll give you an example in, in a moment. And then you can use that transcription to edit and construct an article, a series of. And if you've listened to some of Johnny's contribution in previous episodes, you could use uh, AI powered solutions to help you create condensed version of that um, transcription. So two scenarios that may help people understand. So I was at a conference a few weeks ago. I was recording the uh, the, the, the keynote presentation because it was so dark I couldn't take uh, I couldn't take notes. And I got the audio, and I don't have permission to use that audio as is, and even a transcription. But what I could do, use Eddie to literally transcribe the audio, and it was really, really precise. I mean, I think there was the odd error, but it was more to do legibility and the quality of the sound. And then what I did from Eddie, I was able to use ChatGPT and a few others to give me a series of mini blog posts about that keynote. Know, but what about you, all of you listening, perhaps having a Zoom meeting with a client, which you recall? How about having a team meeting? Meeting where you're discussing, uh, you know, actions. Maybe you're just giving advice and so on. What you can do is get that audio recording from Zoom and uh, other platforms, get it onto Eddy and add the transcription, and that's the beginning of your next blog post series. Yeah, this is the, this is sound bites, isn't it? This is the ability to be able to have varied content. So whether you're taking uh, video content or audio content, irrelevant, you're turning it into a sound bite that has this audio wave as the visual. And that just looks a bit different. Uh, there are people using it online, but not lots. Uh, and to, and again, to stand out, to differentiate, you can take these little sound bites. You know, I love the idea of having of recording a, uh, an internal team meeting and taking a couple of sound bites that can publicly go out and say, you know, uh, you know, as a team, this is what we were working on today. Um, and and this is, you know, this is what our uh, whatever manager said. Um, you know, as long as it's something that can be shared, but how you could turn that into a soundbite and an audiogram, I think, is what people call it as well. Mm -hmm. so this visual wave, brilliant. Uh, yeah, and, and having played with the app as well, uh, I really like that suggestion, Pascal. Thank you. And you can do something even more, Johnny. You can do an audiogram that becomes the promo of the transcription of the article that you've created on your website. So the audiogram is picked up on social media. It entices you to want to know more. When you click on the link, you're taken to a transcription that has been edited so that you can't have it word for word of understandably for reason that you're about to explain. And then you have a good use of that time. So that team meeting, that one-to-one -one coaching session with the client, you can anonymize all those things are what I call content moments. You've got to seize them. Yeah. I like that. And it, it, well, well, you're just making me think, you know, when you're getting feedback from a client, that could be turned into a, an audiogram as well. Uh, there's an advert on the radio that's doing just that right now. Uh, but there we go. We're going to move on. It is time to move on to the website call to action. So this is the one change, the one adjustment that's going to make a big difference to your website experience and help you feel proud of your website again. Johnny, what is your advice for today? Well, I'm not sure if it's one word or two words. I think it's one word. The one word, the one word is white space. I think it, I, th I think I'm sure it's one word. Um, white space is 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 my tip for today because this is about 
giving clarity to the user, making it really simple, really easy, and making them real, you know, taking them on a journey, helping them see exactly what they need very quickly and very easily. And the way to do that is lots of white space. And Google's looking at this as well. Google's looking at the uh, the, the the proportion of uh, text and image ratios, but also the layouts and the style and how things look on the page. And it's, you know, we use this word clean. You want a website that's clean to look at. And by that, we're talking about lots of white space, making it visually easy on the eye, where we can very quickly and easily jump to the right area. And websites have, uh, are not good at considering white space. So my call to action for this week is have a look at two or three of your key pages and consider how you could create a bit more white space. What's your tip, your call to action this week, Pascal? So I want to go back to this idea of uh, uh, end of year review, but the purpose being to create new case studies and testimonials for 2024. So what are people to do? So we get this advice, if you recall, six months ago. So now we're now six months later. I want people to look back at their completed projects over the past six months and compile a list of contacts to get in touch with in January. Let's give people the space and time. And you want to get in touch with them. And this is what I'd like people to do. Have a Zoom call or similar record and use edit to give you the transcription so you can edit and create accompanying stories that will be featured on your website and then use unbounce mentioned by johnny to try different ways in which you can create a, a compelling landing page using those success stories but it's really important because we're too busy all of us moving on to the next project to the next client take a moment to stop what has, has happened the last six months you could even go as far as, have you potentially been a guest speaker at an event? All those things are important for next year's kind of uh, third-party validation. Make the list, contact them in January, record, transcribe, edit, and move on to the next one. Yeah, pe people buy through stories. Uh, it's all about telling the story, and it has to be a compelling story. And the more up-to-date and uh, the more compelling it becomes. And I think Pascal's absolutely right that we do move on to the next project without really reflecting uh, and a lot of the time. And reflection is so, so, so important. That has been episode 19 of the 90 Day Website Mastery Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we, uh, we've we covered everything from should we be controversial, should we allow the controversy from Elon Musk to put us off uh, using the X Twitter feed, uh, the Twitter strike X feed on our website? The answer is if it's relevant and if your audience are on there or, or if there's an opportunity, then there's nothing wrong until it becomes too controversial. <laughs> um, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, consider how to stand out and be different. We've given you some uh, great apps and tips from Unbounce uh, and Eddie Headliner to using white space and reviewing and creating new case studies and testimonials. What another great episode, Pascal. Thank you very much. And you know what's been interesting? So we, we have this idea of being aware of what is happening in your in your sector but, and beyond and making the judgment calls. But this idea of be careful not to be too implicit in your communication. So you have to be explicit and, and share more. But then you, you're being challenged about how you lay out that copy. And thank you for the reminder about the white space. And more importantly, try and find a way to use the roads less traveled so if you know the entire industry of yours is jumping on the bandwagon of a international day of a cyber monday of a blue monday and so on it is likely that therefore the impact of your own effort will be uh, diminished can you as johnny mentioned find ways in the year to actually be the one to stand up from the crown and can be you be more creative in your attempt it's, you know a reminder the gift of the internet and having a website is to find a way to communicate um in a manner that is as unique as you are and as unique as your business please do let us know what you think please let us know if we if there's particular topics you want us to discover to talk about if you found a particular article or maybe there's an app that we've not even mentioned that you think that we should be but the point of this is we want you to feel proud of your website we want to take the moment that someone says you're potentially selling trying to sell something and they say what's your website address and we want to take that moment where your stomach suddenly goes because you think, 
oh my god i don't want to give the website address because it's old it's out of date it doesn't really reflect it doesn't give that compelling story we want you to feel proud of your website and that's what this is all about the 90 day website mastery program is all about making you feel proud about your website again so please do have a look at 90 daymarketingmastery.com you'll be able to book a call with a discovery call with either myself or pascal for more information we'll be back with another uh, podcast episode in the meantime feel free to send your questions share your preferred apps and links to your websites once you've made the changes we've spoken about because we'd love to give you a shout out it's bye now for from us and we'll leave you with a fun video and audio montage whilst you go through your notes and actions please do make sure that you like subscribe comment do all the things share the love with us if we are helping you to be inspired and to start feeling proud of your website again pascal it's been lovely seeing you thank you very much we'll see you all soon take care thanks for watching thanks for listening and thanks for joining